On the morning of September 17th, 161 years ago, soldiers from the Union and Confederacy engaged in combat in Sharpsburg, Maryland. Lee's attempt to conquer the North came to a conclusion in this fight. The bloodiest day in American history continues to be the Battle of Antietam. Four hours of furious battle took place on an old sunken road that divided two fields on that fateful day. The Union and Confederate armies clashed in the surrounding cornfields, farmlands, and Antietam Creek, resulting in a shocking 23,100 men who were wounded, killed, or missing. With a precise plan, Lee invaded Maryland in September 1862. His goal was to shift the fight's focus from the South to Federal territory. Winning there might result in the capture of Washington, D.C., the Federal capital. Success for the Confederacy might potentially convince European countries to acknowledge the Confederate States of America. At the same time, President Lincoln was relying on McClellan to provide the win he needed to maintain Republican dominance in Congress and release a draft Emancipation Proclamation stakes higher than ever on that crucial day. It was just an ordinary cornfield near Woods, and that's where over 1,000 Union soldiers crept to the Confederate lines in the early light of dawn. Their movements were hidden by the head-level stalks. Georgian Confederate men were down on their stomachs within 200 yards in front of the Union army. The Georgians all got up and opened fire as soon as the Union troops emerged from the corn. The smoke, the noise, the artillery is crashing in from all directions. It's just a concentrated terror. People were shouting, there were bodies all over the cornfield, and there was total chaos. 10,000 men lost their lives and were injured in that initial phase of the fight. Lewis Reed, a corporal in the 12th Massachusetts Regiment, was one of the men that made it out of the cornfield. Years later, he wrote a letter describing that day. I found myself on the ground with a strange feeling covering my body. My shirt and blouse filled with blood and I supposed it was my last day on earth. I had the usual feelings of home and friends, and thousands of thoughts ran through my mind at once. Reed reached to the surrounding woods cover. He would live to the age of 83. He remembered every man around him begging for help. By the sunset, two out of every three troops in his regiment will be dead or injured. Most of the fighting takes place here at distances of little more than 100 yards. It's close and brutal. The enemy is right there when you come out. A farm lane known as the Sunken Road, near the center of the battlefield, was another scene of massacre. Here, Hill's division, numbering about 2,600 men, had piled fence rails along the embankment of the road to strengthen their position against Union Major General William H. French's 5,500 approaching troops. There was a close-range battle when the French troops arrived. The sunken road turned into a death trap for the men inside once the Union forces were able to encircle the Confederates. After pushing the Confederates back three hours later, more than 5,000 men were either dead or injured. Because of how violent the battle was, Sunken Road became known as Bloody Lane. Thomas Livermore, 5th New Hampshire Infantry. I noticed that we were in the old Sunken Road. There were so many dead rebels in this path that they formed a line as far as I could see that could be walked upon. Many of them had been killed by the most horrific wounds from shot and shell, and they appeared to be lying exactly how they had been slain, with the dirt soaked with blood. But why was Antietam so deadly? Advanced technology, unwise tactics, and terrible decision-making. The combination of new rifles that could be shot with great accuracy from far away and old-fashioned battle lines led to unprecedented deaths in the Battle of Antietam. At this fight, like in many Civil War battles, both sides lined up their infantry in long, parallel rows before marching into battle. This made sense in earlier times when guns were not very accurate, but by the Civil War, rifles with better accuracy were common. Sometimes, the grievously wounded may have envied the dead. Alonzo Maynard, an 18-year-old private in the 11th Connecticut, was shot four times on the morning of September 17, 
1862 during the attack at Burnside Bridge. At the end of the battle, he claimed that some of the wounds were large as a silver half dollar. Because Maynard was so severely injured, doctors did not treat him right away because they believed he was not going to survive. Not only did the young man escape the Civil War, but he also lived until he was 63 years old. Antietam was unprecedentedly bloody, partly because of improved explosives. Artillery batteries, which might be loaded with canisters, consisted of three to six cannons and supported infantry formations on both sides. Shooting a canister was similar to shooting a machine gun because it was a tin can that held approximately 120 bullets. This skull was found in 1876 next to Burnside Bridge, one of the most important locations in the Civil War on the battlefield of Antietam. The man whose skull was found there was a member of the Union 9th Corps, which led the September 17th assault on the bridge. It is possible to identify the sort of munition that struck the victim based on the size of the damage and the projectile's pieces. An iron canister ball from one of the two field howitzers that are known to have been used to repel that attack. The whole bridge was turned into a killing zone. It took General Ambrose Burnside about three hours trying to force a crossing of the creek. This powerful stronghold was defended by Confederate General Robert Toombs and less than 500 Georgia soldiers in opposition to three federal assaults by General Ambrose Burnside's much larger 9th Corps. Finally, a federal bayonet attack drove the Confederate defenders back who were nearly out of ammo. A relic that stands as proof of the horrifying character of the conflict and its casualties is the Antietam Arm. A few weeks after the brutal combat, the arm was discovered by a farmer. Finding the arm close to the Burnside Bridge shortly after the skirmish concluded is not surprising. The arm, as it looks today, is dark and mummified. Amputation by surgery was a frequent way to lose a limb, but in this case, the arm was severed by cannon. The arm was analyzed by the Smithsonian Institute, and the results revealed that the man who lost the arm was from the Ohio River Valley and was between the ages of 16 and 18. You can take a look on this terrible artifact in Museum of Civil War Medicine. The noises of the violent battle could be heard from a distance, and Fort McHenry would soon feel its impact. The city exploded with thousands of injured soldiers who took up residence in every available shelter. During the Civil War, Clarissa Clara Harlow Barton, a former teacher and patent clerk, served as a frontline nurse. At several battles, including Antietam, she bravely drove her cart of medical supplies into the action despite having little experience and being paid nothing for her efforts. A surgeon at the Battle of Antietam, Dr. James Dunn, praised her efforts, saying, We knew the great Battle of Antietam had begun with the rattle of 150,000 muskets and the terrifying thunder of over 200 cannon. I visited the hospital in the afternoon, as that was when the injured patients started to arrive. After we had used up all the bandages, torn up all the sheets in the house, and tried everything we could think of, our old friend Miss Barton, along with a bag full of bandages in every possible kind, came to pick us up. Soldiers during the Antietam battle period saw the surgeons in the hospital near the battlefield as incompetent butchers. A possible reason for a high mortality rate with military trephining may be because the field environment in which the procedures were done was often dirty and many head wounds became infected. About 35% of patients with serious head injuries survived until they were transported to a large hospital. The main factor that seemed to have determined whether the patient would survive or not was infection. Some warriors went insane. After surviving the horrors of Antietam, at least two soldiers from the 16th Connecticut Regiment passed away in Connecticut mental hospitals. Right after the fight, the roughly 4,000 fallen men were buried in the farmlands that surrounded Sharpsburg. Because the burials were done quickly, the graves were arranged chaotically, with some single entries and small ditches housing hundreds of people. Many burials had become visible by the spring of 1864, and it was decided that a better way 
needed to be found. Maryland bought 11 acres in March 1865 to use as a cemetery for people who lost their lives in the 1862 Maryland campaign. On September 17, 1862, six major and brigadier generals lost their lives or suffered fatal injuries in the Battle of Antietam. George Anderson, Lawrence O'Brien Branch, William Stark from the Confederate side, and Joseph Mansfield, Israel Richardson, Isaac Rodman from the Union side. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and press likes.